Yeah. Yeah. Um, today, uh, we are going to describe our experience um, on using open phone to analyze underwater vehicles. So um, this tutorial is going to focus ex explicitly on the mass uh, generation. Um, Tadea, Maria Tadea Quintuña, she uh, just finished her uh, capstone design. She's now an engineer and as uh, Daniela said, uh, she's going to start a master's program soon. So uh, we, we got a lot of uh, lessons, lessons learned and uh, we are building a group uh, in order to develop this, this muscle, these, these simulation capabilities. So what we're gonna do today, or what we're gonna show today, um, we're gonna talk about what kind of underwater vehicles we should be able to analyze in the near future, um, including our recent experience. How do we generate the geometry? Uh, that's kind of tricky. Today is gonna go into the details. Um, how do we set the, the grid to perform all the, all the simulations? Um, uh, I uploaded um, a case that we recently run about the dark pass of a submarine on the Dropbox. So I suppose that that's gonna be available after, after the tutorial. So you can check it. And uh, what we think that we can improve in the near future. So let's see. Uh, everything started like a challenge. The Ecuadorian Navy had, um, a project where they need to uh, change a speed sensor from their submarine. That is the one on the on the left, on the left side, upper on the upper side. So uh, okay, so we start thinking how we can accomplish that task. How we can pro produce reliable results using um, open form that we had some experience uh, in uh, analyzing surface vessels. And we know that um, our Navy got some experience using uh, more underwater vehicles, like the spray glider to do some measurements uh, in Galapagos and the ROV that they use in the Antarctica, um, in Antarctica mission. So in the near, uh, after we think about how we can succeed, how we can do this uh, project, we believe like in the, maybe in the next 10 years, we can have the capabilities to analyze some bio-inspired uh, underwater vehicles. So that's a long-term shot, we'll see. I know that uh, we got a giant manta rays nearby, uh, like two hours driving that we can dive with. So let's see if we can make that happen. Um, as I said, everything started with a challenge. We need to analyze a 60 meter submarine. Um, this active one, it was built around 1980. Uh, they are constantly renovating, upgrading their equipment. And they, they, they wanted to change this speed sensor because they had some issues, uh, operating issues. The sensor got broken every like two, three months when they get close to close to the bay or a buoy. So we start thinking about how we can solve this. Solve this. And uh, I, I would say like after 12 months of uh, thinking, working, learning uh, how to use open phone, uh, starting from the DTC tutorial um, that we found with open phone, the version seven, and uh, we later uh, extended to the um, operation, underwater operation of the submarine. So we published this on a, uh, recently on a paper. And uh, I would say I'm really proud about, about this work. It was hard work. Uh, Tadea did a really amazing job, although uh, uh, she's an undergrad, she was an undergrad student. I would, I would say like uh, we learned a lot in the process. So uh, now Tadea is gonna describe how we generate the, the, the CAT file, the CAT geometry with Tadea. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I will continue with the second item of this tutorial about CAT generation. 
So first, it, it is important to know how to prepare the geometry to be used in OpenFOAM. I will try to give you as many tips as possible based in our experience. So to begin with, there are three basic requirements. The first one is that the cat has to be in type mesh and we prefer to export it as an SDL file. Second, that geometry has to be manifold. It means a closed space. And about the tools, we prefer to use rhinoceros and grasshopper to generate the three-dimensional geometry. And we prefer to use Blender to check that mesh. Next, please. I will give you an example of generating a 3.56 meters model of DARPA geometry for OpenFOAM. Uh, this is an interesting uh, geometry used in experimental testing programs because it, the sail, the hull, and the appendages are defined by equations. In this slide, I only present the equations that define the whole. So there, here is where grasshopper takes place. It is a um, tool of rhinoceros that allow us to program visually. So we introduce the equations in Grasshopper and we generate the three-dimensional geometry. Probably you will have obtained the points in Excel or in any other programming software, but Rhinoceros uh, gave us this tool to make all this directly. Um, for this example, I will only use the bow equation to explain some comments uh, of grasshopper. Next, please. This is the environment. And it is very easy to use as rhinoceros. And if we see the bow equation, it only depends on the x variable. So, we have to introduce the expression and write on it the equation. Next. So also we have to introduce the range. This range contains the domain and also the number of points that I want to have in my curve. So, if we see the question, the domain goes through zero to 3.3. And in for this case, I select a number of points of 50. Next. Once we have introduced the question, we tell Grasshopper to draw the points in the three dimensional space. So the X corresponds to the range and the y to the equation. We have the points and again, we tell Grasshopper to draw the curve from those points. And in the left pic in the right picture, we can visualize the curve of the bow in rhinoceros. Next. We can repeat the process for the rest of the questions of, for the hull as the parallel middle body, the after body, and the after body cap. So finally, we will have four equations. We have to join it, it together. And as the geometry is an axisymmetric body, we use the tool revolution to make the surface. Next, please. Once again, we can visualize the whole of DARPA in rhinoceros. The next step is to convert the surface into mesh. 
But in order to make this tutorial more useful for you, we will use the geometry with the hull and with the sail. If we see in the pictures below, in the left differs from the right in the number of points that contains the whole surface. It is a very important step when you are making your geometry that the adjacent surfaces have the same of or similar number of points. So if we look to the picture in the left, we can see that the points of the sail are very different from the number of points in the hull. So don't worry, I, I understand if that happens to you. For example, if you import a surface from another file and we can correct that, we can say mistake with the command rebuild. Next, please. So this command allows us to introduce the number of points in the U and V directions. So once we have all the surface with the similar number of points, we have to join them together. In order to do that, we have the command join edges. For this command, we have to select every single edge of every single intersection between the surfaces. But in order to help us to know which edge is not joined yet, we can use the command show edges. So at the end, if all the geometry is closed, there will not be any magenta line. Everything has to be black. Until this point, we have the surface of the geometry. So the next step is to convert it into mesh. Next. To do that, we have the command mesh from surface. It's something very um, good from Reno that allowed us to convert the surface into mesh. So, but it will take a little time depending on how many points did you choose to make your surface. Here it is um, the mesh file, the mesh geometry. So we can see here the importance of making or having the same number of points in the cell and in the hole. If you can see exactly the joint between them. We have the geometry in a mesh type and we can export it an, as an SDL file. I have to say that we can use it in open phone when it is an easy geometry, for example, in DARPA. But there are many other complex geometries that needs another step that I will show you next. Yeah, here. Uh, we have to import that STL file in Blender. So Blender um, is a very complete software and it is very used in 3D animation, but we only use it to prove if our mesh is water tightness. It has the common non-manifold. So if there is any error, it will appear in orange, as you can see in the right picture. It error, I, I made that error to show you how to correct that. So uh, there are two ways of solving that. Next, please. Uh, the first one is just to fill it with face. And the second one that I show you, we have to select the points around the gap and mer merge them. We have the, op the options at first, at last, at center, but the most common is at center. It is a very 
easy way, but it is only recommended when you have a planar surfaces. Because, for example, if this hole is an, in an intersection, you can probably change a little bit the geometry, so it's not a very good um, option. Now, if there is any, uh, there is not any orange point, we can say that we have our mesh. Next, please. And finally, we have to export as an STL format and also as an ASCII uh, file. We have, yes, yes, next, please. <laughs> next. Yeah, and we have a, our geometry ready uh, for open form. Good, good. Thank you, Tadea. Um, so, uh, DARPA sub off is um, like an easy geometry, if I could say that, um, regardless of all the equations that uh, you saw. But the thing is that um, we had to analyze a real submarine and uh, we didn't have any equations uh, to generate the, the, the CAD. So um, we had to rely on the blueprints provided by the owner, ship owner, and uh, we paid a visit, well, okay, maybe a couple of visits to the uh, a dry dock, a local dry dock, in order to confirm and double check some of the measurements. And especially on the bow section, uh, where the curvature is the, it's uh, really high. So we generate a simplified version of the submarine as the one uh, that I'm pointing out. And uh, as Tadea said, it, we try always to double check uh, what we generate. And in this case, although the submarine is relatively big, is like uh, 60 meters uh, the length, uh, we got a reasonable error difference between the displacement from the cat versus the one that we got uh, when the submarine is uh, at surface condition. So we, we consider this CAD like it was good enough and uh, we use it for our simulations in open phone. After we, we confirmed that the numerical setup uh, with the DARPA was reliable, we have to keep in mind that DARPA is a uh, model scale is around 3.5 meter and this one is 60 meter. Uh, we try to conserve the same uh, numerical setup, the geometry, the grids, uh, and the, the, the biggest difference wa was on the Prince layer that we generate around the submarine. So in order to, to generate the grid, first we need to understand uh, the problem, the physics of the problem. Uh, we start uh, easy uh, with the DARPA geometry, as you say, it's quite uh, the axis symmetric geometry and uh, there are it's well documented there there is a lot of uh, data available experimental and numerical and we uh, use some of them that uh, consider the submarine operating uh, really in almost deep water and uh, close to the free surface and uh, we were aware that there are some non-linear effects when the submarine is operating really close to the to the free surface. And uh, the thing is that our real submarine, the type uh, 209, it was uh, the sensor, the speed sensor had to work in all the conditions. So we need to make sure that we were able to capture all the physics uh, at surface, periscope and deep water conditions. Uh, we need to make sure also like we, our mesh was good enough in order to capture all the gra gradients uh, generated by the boundary layer and the free surface, all the things that happen in the free surface. And uh, we started uh, with the surface condition uh, following the ITTC recommendations. Uh, the element size, we also use the, those recommendations based on the expected wavelength 
and uh, we set our domain size as uh, in function of the length between perpendicular of the submarine. Uh, we take advantage of the uh, symmetry of the flow, expected symmetry around the center line. Uh, so we only model half domain. Um, we set all these patches, the six patches, the typical ones, and uh, we are showing the boundary condition that we use. So we got the inlet on the on the right, on the on the left, the the outlet, the atmosphere, the bottom, and the mid plane, uh, close to the submarine, and on the starboard we got the side the side plane. So as I said, we need to make sure like we can capture the boundary layer reliably in a reliable way. So we found like um, we can use up to three levels of refinement near the hull. And uh, we use wall function, the K omega SST turbulence model. Uh, these number of prints layers uh, are the ones that we found like works in, in this kind of problem for the DARPA, um, for the 209 submarine, between four and eight prints layer, and the Y plus uh, for the first uh, layer, we aim uh, for a value to achieve a value between 30 and 300. Uh, those values were easy to get uh, with the DARPA, not that easy to get with uh, S209, as you can say here, you can see here. Uh, Snappy um, got some limitations capturing, um, adding the layers, the prints layer, especially on the high curvature regions and uh, close to the foils. So that's something that uh, we consider that we could live with for now, but uh, that in the near future, we need to find ways to, to, to get a 100% coverage. Uh, we use the typical, the typical formulation to estimate the thickness of the first print layer in, based on the Y plus, the target Y plus, and the skin friction coefficient formulation uh, from ITTC. Uh, we, as I said, we, we try to be consistent with our uh, uh, grids between the DARPA on the, on the left and the 209, the, the full scale submarine on the right. We use six levels of uh, topo sets, the refinements on the XY plane. And uh, on the on the sea plane, uh, we try to man to keep a um, uniform uh, element size uh, in all the range of the of the uh, conditions that the submarine operates. For the DARPA, it was from like uh, one point one to five point four non-dimensional uh, uh, deepness. And uh, for a submarine, the values were quite similar. The only extreme condition that we had to uh, add to the 209 submarine was um, the surface condition. But considering that we, we use the DTC tutorial, that was like our first step. Um, we had to throw in our results so the grid, we generate five grids for the DARPA. Uh, these simulations were quite cheap in terms of number of uh, time steps. Um, I would say that uh, we could just stop the simulation at 4,000 uh, steps. And we uh, had the opportunity to, to use a cluster uh, HPC cluster and um, our finest grid use almost 12 million elements. We, because um, there, the, we had some experimental data, we performed the verification and validation procedure and uh, we assess the uncertainty, we perform the, the grid, uh, grid convergence index. Uh, for the finer set, we got less than 1%. And uh, 
All these calculations consider the submarine in the deep water condition, HD 5.4. Uh, for the full scale, uh, we didn't have any experimental data yet. We will, uh, I, I will say that we will have some in June that we got some sea trials scheduled. Uh, we'll see what happened. And, uh, but anyhow, we check the grid convergence. Uh, again, we use five, five grids uh, densities, uh, only changing the block mesh file and keeping everything the same. And in this case, we achieve around 23 million elements in simulations. And uh, this grid convergence uh, was on the opposite side uh, of their conditions. Uh, it was in the surface condition. So that's why this number is quite low. So in some sense, we, we assess um, the, the sensitivity of the result for deep water when we expect to, um, that free surface effects are not important, but here definitely free surface effects are important. And uh, we can notice that there are some oscillations at the end and uh, we got some evidence that those oscillations are related to wave breaking uh, effects. So um, we put everything together uh, on the setup files uh, with the block mesh dig, uh, the surface feature effect is a uh, feature extract dig. Uh, th this was really uh, important, especially for this submarine, the 209 because there are so many things happening, especially where the upper deck structure, superstructure intersect with the main hull. And uh, as, as um, we show here, the finer the grid, the higher the coverage that we get with the Prince layer. So that's one behavior that we need to, to check every time that we do this kind of refinement. Um, we, we uh, as Tadea said, we generate the STL file geometry and we set the snappy X mesh dig, uh, dictionary. Uh, we could, we could uh, run these cases um, in our local workstation using these scripts that are basically the same script that we got with the DTC tutorial. Uh, but we tried to, to split it because in, the, in our HPC uh, facility, um, it was easy, easier to generate the mesh using a single processor. Um, it took up to, uh, I would say two hours. And after that, we used the muscles and uh, split it up to, I would say 256 processors. So the only, the only challenge that we need to overcome with the HPC was that uh, they, didn't, they didn't use open phone at all. So we had to find a way to be able to run open phone under the singularity environment. And we had to create this image. Uh, at the beginning, it was kind of hard to understand uh, why the the compilers need to have the same version between the between our workstation where we generate the, the image and the cluster. But after a couple of weeks, we were able to run OpenFun on that HPC facility. And I'm just uh, including showing here the script in case anyone um, faced that, that, uh, that problem. So uh, after we put everything together, we just generate the, the, the grid. Uh, let, me, uh, let me show you. Uh, can you see my terminal? Yes. Right. So uh, I share this case. It's uh, for the DARPA near uh, free surface condition, this fruit number that is close to the, to, is in the range of the nonlinearities that we saw in the experimental data 
and this the grid that we call grid three, that is like the intermediate density. So uh, I I included some of the results time step, so you can you can open it with Paraview, and uh, I found it really useful to generate these log files. Definitely, when everything uh, with something goes wrong. Uh, the first thing that I check is, uh, let's say the log check mesh. Uh, let me see. Um, open phone uh, do a really good job here. Uh, reporting was wrong. And uh, something that I have found that I can live with uh, is uh, this kind of uh, errors. Uh, until now, I haven't been able to fix those. Uh, I would say that this max skewness uh, is related to the complexity of the geometry. So, let me see. Um, the first step or the first file that uh, we use is the block mesh. We put everything together, the domain side that I showed you before is here, the, the limits. Uh, we include some S, uh, some levels, control levels uh, along the, the S axis. And we just do it as usual in open phone, divided in the X and the, and the Y, uh, direction and on the C direction we uh, we uh, use these values and uh, we put all the information here the patches the atmosphere the inlet that I described before is uh, explicitly here um, the feature, the snappy is something that uh, we we spend a lot of time on trying to understand how to how to generate a reliable uh, grid. Um, we make sure that we keep our features uh, that are generated uh, with the commands uh, surface features. They, and uh, that we refine the surface of the hole. This, this version uh, only refined due to curvature, uh, two levels of refinement. And something that we found really, really useful was uh, if we use the refinement close to the hole, um, for the deep water problems, we could go straight to up to uh, three levels of refinement without any progression, but when the free surface uh, gets in, into the problem close to the to the submarine, uh, we found really useful to do it in steps. Uh, we go really close to the hole, like three levels, but we try to specify that that refinement needs to go uh, in steps, two levels, 20 centimeters, uh, one level if it's 30 centimeters. Um, so surface layers, eight surface layer, the expansion ratio 1.5, and uh, the final layer thickness is uh, 70%. So let me see if I have uh, here, let me, let me show you. Uh, before being able to run the simulations, we spend a lot of time designing the grids. Uh, we set the, the limits uh, on a um, table file, and uh, we specify the, the element size of the six top set uh, level here. And uh, we even, um, include our refinement around the hole. 
So in this case, this is for the 209 submarine. Uh, we change between one and two the refining levels close to the submarine. And uh, in this case, we use this 50%. So we estimate every uh, parameter that we consider important and we double check it once that we got the mesh uh, uh, generated after snapping. So we got the final layer thickness. We double check our uh, total layer thickness. And uh, we started with an estimation of the Y plus. As I said, uh, with the full scale submarine, it's kind of hard to get uh, really a small Y plus values. But uh, we got some reliable results with uh, up to 100, the Y plus the target. Of course, once that we generate all the, we simulate the problem, uh, we got a different distribution of the Y plus. So uh, the, the directory that I share in the, in the Dropbox, you can, is, uh, I think that you can review it, you can check it, it's everything in there. And uh, you can see the refinement di dictionaries, the snappy configuration that we use, uh, even the solver setup. And uh, we got some, some things to fix. The, the most important one, I would say that is this uh, coverage of the freeze layer. For the DARPA, it's kind of easy for a snappy to add the layers. We got almost 100% coverage, but for the full scale submarine, the 209 is kind of hard to get close to the feature lines. And believe me, we try uh, several changes. We try several options, and uh, this is the best that we can get. Uh, recent, recently, uh, we saw that with the version 20, uh, there is a new methodology to add this priest layer. So definitely, this is something that we will try in the near future. Uh, again. What could we improve is the refinement. Uh, we noticed that if we go, we are really aggressive with the refinement, only close, a uh, uh, short distance close to the hull, we got some unphysical ripples on the, on the way, on the free surface profile. Uh, that once that we do it uh, in a progressive way, uh, these ripples uh, almost disappear. Uh, in here is, is more evident. This is a spurious wave due to the big jump that we got between the external uh, elements and the, uh, the inner elements in, around the hole. But once that we spread that uh, refinement, we can see that it is smoother, uh, but I would say we can, we can improve it a little bit more. So uh, this is it, this is our experience. We have a lot of work to do. We could improve the Prince layer generation. Uh, also, we wanna check uh, if we can uh, estimate the boundary layer thickness using near wall functions, uh, keeping within the, the, the runs uh, turbulence modeling and uh, uh, as I said, in June, hopefully we will perform some sea trials with the submarine crew. Uh, I think that I will be involved and uh, I, uh, I hope that it, I'm a little bit scared about this because I have never been uh, in, inside a submarine while it's under, underwater, but we'll see what happens. And uh, the free surface effect is evident. The water, the velocity distribution change a lot uh, if it, the submarine gets uh, close to the free surface. So this is it. This is our experience. And thank you for your time. I don't know if you have any questions.